Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A fire breaks out at a north side home overnight. We have details just ahead. Plus, U.S. Senate lawmakers are set for a final vote on a massive infrastructure bill later this morning. And when describing the humidity this morning, it is almost as massive. I mean, it's a big deal this morning. Very uncomfortable out there. Uh, par for the course this time of year. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is August 10th. The best news this morning is that our good friend Mike Osterhage yes. is back in house. Yes, good morning. That's Mike. the best news. It only gets better from here. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. we're glad to have you back. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty pretty warm out there. You step out and step outside and it's like, whoa, not no, much of a cool said. down overnight, was it? And walking across the parking lot in the grocery store yesterday, it's like, ooh, I mean, it was just getting you. We got up to 96, still just one degree shy of the uh, normal high temperature, but yeah, it was toasty and just expect more today. And this morning, as you can see off the distance there, we are starting off with some clouds, 79 degrees. The uh, average normal low is 76, so obviously we are on the, the warm side of things. A ton of humidity with these dew points in the mid and even some upper 70s around here. So mix it all together. It feels like 83 when you step outside, 85 Castorville, 83 also at Canyon Lake and heat index readings going to be well up into the hundreds once again today. Mold is on the uh, the moderate side. Also, CPS Energy is ask, asking folks to uh, cut back between 2 and 7 p.m. on the energy use because it's going to be really hot out there. We are going to be uh, pretty much steady this morning, maybe dropping down a couple of degrees here and there, warm and humid. And wind is also going to start to pick a little bit of a breeze out there. Hopefully, it kind of takes the edge off. 96 high temperature today, mostly sunny. Heat index is going to be well up into the hundreds. More of the same the next couple of days. However, we may see a little bit of a break by the weekend with a small chance for a couple of showers or two. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, fire investigators are trying to figure out what caused a fire at a north side home. It happened in the 300 block of Hollywood near San Pedro Avenue just after midnight. When firefighters got there, they found heavy flames shooting out the front door and the side windows. Fire officials say a family of five, they were able to get out safely. Investigators say the house was undergoing renovations when that fire broke out. This morning, a suspected kidnapper is dead after he led deputies on a pursuit in Guadalupe County that ended in a shootout. That is according to the Guadalupe County Sheriff's Office. Those deputies were advised of a vehicle that was involved in an aggravated kidnapping in Travis County late yesterday. Two deputy constables tried to pull over the suspect on I-10 East near Highway 46, but that vehicle sped up to more than 100 miles per hour. The OnStar system in the car was able to reduce the vehicle's speed to 5 miles per hour. Deputies said they were able to get the vehicle to stop near the FM 2438 exit east of Seguin, and that's when they say the suspect started to shoot at the deputies. Law enforcement returned fire and hit the suspect. Sheriff's office says deputies tried to revive the suspect, but he was pronounced dead. No deputies were hurt. The Texas Rangers are now taking over the investigation. This morning, here's a look at the numbers of coronavirus cases in Bear County. We continue to see about 1,000 new cases a day, according to the seven day average. Hospitalizations continue to rise now up to 1,197 COVID-19 patients. 314 patients are in the intensive care unit. 181 are on ventilators. In your morning headlines, a sweeping infrastructure bill nearing a final vote in the U.S. Senate. Lawmakers are set to pass the bipartisan $1.2 trillion infrastructure proposal as early as this morning. It includes billions of dollars for projects focused on public transportation, broadband, and water projects. The focus now shifts to the budget. Democrats releasing their $3.5 trillion resolution that is far less popular with Republicans who are opposed to raising the debt ceiling. Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the infrastructure bill will go nowhere in the House until the budget proposal is passed. Four U.S. lawmakers are urging the U.S. Attorney General to prohibit prosecutors from seeking the death penalty. That as the Justice Department reviews whether the government's methods of capital punishment are fair and humane. Early last month, the Attorney General put a moratorium on capital punishment for federal defendants. In a letter, the lawmakers said, quote, continue to seek capital sentences undermines the entire purpose of the review and is a conflict of interest, end quote. The Justice Department has not responded to requests for comment. 
North Korea is warning the U.S. and South Korea over joint military drills set for this month. Kim Yo-jong, the sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, says the two countries will, quote, face a more serious security threat, end quote, for ignoring Pyongyang's warnings. The drills are held every year, usually aggravating the North. Those trials, uh, rather, those drills have been scaled back recently due to COVID and an attempt to de-escalate the situation on the Korean Peninsula. Also overseas, the Taliban gaining ground three weeks before the U.S. completes its withdrawal of American troops from Afghanistan. Now the White House is being pressed for a response. Here's ABC's Stephanie Ramos. The situation in Afghanistan deteriorating quickly. The Taliban taking control of two more provincial capitals, bringing the total to six. The Afghan Ministry of Defense releasing video of airstrikes against Taliban positions. But the Taliban's takeover has been swift. In just the past five months, the group seizing wide swaths of the country. And now, a growing humanitarian crisis for Afghan children. At least 27 killed and 137 injured since Friday. The Pentagon saying today the situation is clearly not going in the right direction. However, the secretary continues to believe uh, that the Afghan forces have the capability, they have the capacity to make a big difference on the battlefield. With the full U.S. withdrawal just weeks away, the Afghan government clearly struggling to make that difference. Stephanie Ramos, ABC News at the White House. 436, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, your air conditioner is working a little harder these days, so we have three things you can do to help keep your house cooler. Spurs taking on the Jazz in Summer League play. We have some highlights coming up next here on GMSA. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Yes, it's humid out there, and it's going to be a hot one again. We'll be right back. In morning sports after going winless in Salt Lake City, the Spurs kicking off summer league play in Las Vegas last night against the Timberwolves. San Antonio finds some rhythm in the second quarter. First round draft pick Josh Primo drives inside for a quick turnaround jumper. Then a few minutes later, Trey Jones finds Primo behind the arc for three. Spurs up 33-32, but they trail at halftime. Fast forward to the fourth, Devin Vassell comes alive. He scores 15 of his team high, 26 in the fourth, including a game-tying three-pointer with 44 seconds left. Minnesota scores the game winner on the next possession, though. Spurs fall 91-89. Trey Jones was back in the lineup for the first time, and he scored 16 points. I'm going to knock some rust off, um, but... I'm just trying to stick with it. Uh, something that you know the coaches were um, trying to stay on us about was um, picking it up on the defensive end. So I'm trying to be a leader for our team. I knew that if I were to pick it up on that end, um, the other guys would um, as well. During halftime of Spurs T-Wolves Summer League game, we were able to hear from Keldon Johnson. He's the Spurs forward who helped Team USA win gold in Tokyo. He was first picked for the select team to help prepare the Team USA roster for the Summer Games, but was later promoted to the Olympic team when two players were forced to drop out. It didn't hit me yet, you know, I'm kind of like uh, still just living in the moment, but I think it's definitely uh, crazy. I think uh, you know, I'm 21 with a gold medal. I'm definitely blessed and uh, some people got sick, some people got hurt, and um, but we still maintain and uh, we came out with the gold. You know, uh, we didn't give in to what everybody was saying. Uh, we knew what we were capable of and we knew uh, what we had to do to win. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. There is no question who the star is of the Dallas Cowboys training camp this year. It's second year wide receiver C.D. Lamb, who has made spectacular catches in Oxnard after an incredible rookie year in the league, where he almost made over a thousand yards receiving. Now he's gone viral on social media with some of his receptions, getting more playing time wide out than slot receiver, while his teammate Amari Cooper is still on the mend after offseason ankle surgery. And that's a look at morning sports. And time now is 441 and about 78 degrees for now. What's cooler than being cool? An air conditioner that works this time of year. Up next, some simple things you can do to make it work just a little bit better. Also next, a major cruise line gets approval to require passengers to provide proof of vaccination before boarding. 
And welcome back. It's about 444. A federal judge has ruled that a cruise line can require passengers show proof of vaccination before boarding. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, a federal judge saying Norwegian Cruise Line can now require Florida passengers to provide proof of vaccination before boarding, going directly against Governor Ron DeSantis's orders. This is a victory for the cruise industry, at least for now. Just days ago, with the Delta variant surging, Carnival, Princess, and Hall in America announced that they are making masks mandatory for all passengers, regardless of vaccination status. Now this morning, nearly all of the companies tell ABC News they are trying to figure out how this new ruling applies to them. A number of cruise lines are going to be returning to Florida in the fall, and they're going to continue to watch and see how it plays out. And coming up at 7 a.m., an ABC News exclusive. We'll talk live to the president and CEO of Norwegian Cruise Line, Frank Del Rio. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Tis the season here in Texas. Our ACs are getting a good workout these days. But if your air conditioner is struggling to keep things cool, 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris says there are some ways to maximize the cool when Mother Nature turns up the heat. When it's hot out and you just want to cool down, it's a bad time for your air conditioning to act up. So if your window unit or central AC isn't cooling like it used to, Consumer Reports says there are a few fixes you can do yourself while waiting for the repairman. Start with the air filter. Well, a dirty filter is a common problem for window and central ACs. It restricts the airflow, which reduces the AC's ability to cool the room. Clean it or replace it yourself. No need for a service call. Window units typically have a reusable filter that you need to vacuum gently and then wash with soap and water about once a month during peak months. For central ACs, check your manual to see how often yours needs replacing. You'll need more frequent replacements if you have pets. Their hair can clog the filters fast. Another way to maximize efficiency? Use weather stripping around window units. Location also matters. A window unit has to work harder in a sunny spot. Keep your shades closed during the day and keep the heat out. If the temperature seems off with your central AC, be sure the thermostat isn't exposed to direct sunlight. That may cause it to register the wrong temperatures. You also want to be sure that your AC has enough cooling capacity or power. Take a look at the room it's going to be in. If your unit is too small for your space, it will never keep up, especially on those super hot days. On the other hand, if your unit is too large, it might cycle too quickly and not dry out the air and leave your space a little humid. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, with Seth, that dog was like, hey, what did I do? <laughs> He did look like this oh, dog fur, uh, otherwise known according to dogs as magical fibers of love. Oh, yeah. yes, of course. <laughs> it's okay if you shed. We, we, we love you guys. We do. Our <laughs> little fur babies. 447, let's check in with Mike Oster Hage. And uh, well, that's a beautiful yeah. sight, Mike. Yeah, another back of the AC, another thing to do uh, ceiling fans. Yeah, keep only them. when you're in the room, though, only when you're in the room, though, because it's just cooling you off, not the room itself. Right. It's not like a big, you know, circulation around the house or anything like that. So, right. Yeah. I always left them on. I always thought that was conducive to the system. But then we ran a story mm -hmm. recently and mm -hmm. it was you and the I both were kind of like the opposite. Well, because yeah. like, you know, Louise and I have that argument all the time. <laughs> so, hey, <laughs> and how high it should be at night when you're saying that's a whole different story. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it is going to be really, really hot. The next it was very hot yesterday and it's going to be hot the next uh, couple of days. This is a beautiful picture. Great looking sunset shot there with a few high wispy clouds. We're starting off with clouds this morning, so we'll have a couple of them with the uh, the sunrise. And uh, yeah, it's warm and humid out there. Once again, heat index readings uh, 83 Helotus, San Antonio, 85 Castroville, 85 down the road in Pleasanton. And you know, when the AC units just don't even get a chance to really take a break in the overnight hours because of these high heat index readings. So that's when you want to keep a, a fan going as well. And the uh, satellite picture over the past uh, 12 hours, nothing really much going on. You can see sort of see some of these low clouds this sort of darker shade of gray moving on in here and those low clouds we keep around this morning the more sunshine later on today down along the coastal plain uh, there is the chance for a few showers to pop up here and there same thing tomorrow we'll go through that cycle where we have clouds in the morning more sunshine in the afternoon and there's those few cloud or a few uh, showers pretty much along the coastal plain i doubt if anything really moves in any further to the north and west 
And again, count them on one hand. That'll be about the situation. Otherwise, nothing really changes uh, today, tomorrow or Thursday for the most part. But then once we start to get into Friday, a few more clouds hanging around here and over the weekend, we do have a little bit better chance for a couple of showers, uh, maybe 30% chance for a few showers or a thunderstorm, especially going Sunday into Monday. There's a disturbance which will be lying across the area late in the weekend, and that'll give us that small chance for some rain. Tropics right now, it started off real quick season and then dull. Nothing was going on now. Here's this system which is moving through the uh, Lesser Antilles right now. It is still just a, a, a wave, if you will, a low, but there's a pretty good chance that that's going to become a, a tropical storm. And as of right now, the path that this would take would move right across um, the greater Antilles and going across Cuba and then looks like up in toward Florida and the southeast United States. It would take that curve up uh, and staying away from us. And then there's going to be a few more of those uh, waves developing off there in the Atlantic Ocean and we're starting to head in toward. We're not quite to the peak of the season. Peak of the season doesn't come for about a month and then it'll start to tail off from there. 891 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then later on this afternoon, plenty of sunshine, somewhat of a breeze out there. We're Still going to have those heat index readings well up into the low hundreds later on today. 96 high temperature other than the first when we hit 97, we have not yet hit or since then not hit a normal average high temperature, which is 97 right now. Going to be close to it, of course, and you stand out and again. These numbers are in the shade. Direct sun walking across the parking lot of the uh, grocery store. It is hot and makes you feel even hotter and then temperatures will go down a few degrees by the weekend with that chance for a shower or two around here. Well, it's what, August 10th. Part of my front yard is robust, green, thick grass. The other part, the, the scales have tipped and it's starting to brown up a little bit. Yeah, had a water. A sad. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, we're not uh, having a repeat of July or May. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Hey, Mike, it's good to have you back. Thank you. Yeah, You're welcome. Thank you very much. Good. Welcome back. 451, about 78 degrees. And still ahead, Justin Bieber and Billie Eilish continue to exceed expectations on the newest Billboard music chart. Let's all take a look. Look at your morning lottery numbers from last night's drawing. Pick three, zero, seven, four. Uh, let's see, the bonus ball is, sorry, fireball is three. It's not like I have never done this before. I just forgot. Daily four number, zero, two, eight, three, fireball five. That's cool. It's 4.52 in the morning. That's true. I got you. Cash five, eight, 16, 21, 30, 34. And your Texas two step, five, 13, 16, 24, bonus ball 15. Five till this morning, Billie Eilish and Justin Bieber are making big moves on the Billboard charts. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. No sophomore slump for Billie Eilish. Her second album, Happier Than Ever, debuts at number one on the Billboard 200 album chart. Billboard says it had the fifth best sales plus streaming week of the year so far. Eilish's first album also debuted at number one in 2019. Eilish bumped 17 year old The Kid Leroy from the top spot. But The Kid Leroy song Stay with Justin Bieber has climbed to number one on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart, his first number one. Billboard points out Leroy is the first solo guy from Australia to hit number one since Rick Springfield with Jesse's Girl over 40 years ago. One event marking the 20th anniversary of 9-11 will aim to make people laugh. Jon Stewart and Pete Davidson are gathering some of the top comedians in the business for NYC Still Rising after 20 years, a comedy celebration. The event will feature Amy Schumer, Dave Chappelle, John Mulaney, Wanda Sykes, and more. September 12th at Madison Square Garden. Jon Stewart has long worked to help 9-11 first responders get proper benefits and medical remedied. care. And Pete Davidson lost his father, a firefighter, on 9-11. And happy birthday, Kylie Jenner, the reality TV star and makeup mogul, is 24 today. While actor, writer, and producer Justin Thoreau is 50. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 4.56 and about 78 degrees out there. Kids ages 5 to 11 might be the next group to get vaccinated. Still ahead on GMSA, how the American Academy of Pediatrics is pushing the FDA to authorize kid-friendly vaccines as fast as possible. And have you ever said, I sure do wish I could mow the lawn more? Hmm, <laughs> if you have, then you're in luck. We're going to tell you about a brand new lawn mowing simulator coming up in Tech Bites.
Do you have a pest problem ahead on GMSA later this morning? We'll some of the best ways to rid yourself of bugs and rodents in your home. And a quick look at the Rosa Trans guys. Flashing lights there at I-35 at Watson Lane. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A man is dead following a shooting on the city's southeast side overnight. Details coming up. There is a new push for uh, COVID-19 vaccines for kids now that more children are being affected. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, it is warm and humid, but guess what? Later, it's going to be hot and humid. So if you got something to do, do that, Aaron, right now, if you can, if anyone, you know, is open right now. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, so I guess uh, now it's 5 a.m. You could you take your dog out, I guess. You, you, you could, you mm -hmm. could. The pavement's probably finally cooled down to the point where that's not going to be a problem. Mike Ostrage joins us now with more, and we look ahead. Now, you have pointed out that we still have not officially hit our typical normal afternoon high temperatures. Well, uh, on the 1st of August, we did hit 97. Okay. And yesterday, 96. I know it's splitting hairs, and the average, you know, the between the low and the high was... Uh, the average temperature, but yeah, I mean, we're still not seeing anything just outrageously hot. Of course, we haven't seen these these hotter temperatures uh, sustained in a while. So yeah, like I said earlier, walking across the parking lot at the grocery store yesterday, it was just like, man, that sun, because when you're in the direct sun, it obviously feels about 10, 15 degrees uh, even hotter than that because sun's heating you up. You're not just feeling the air temperature. Speaking of air temperature, it's 79 right now. Dew point, that bottom number 75. That means there's a lot of humidity out there. Wind is out of the south at 14. This is going to be a decent breeze today. We're going to make it up to 96 later on, which again is just about at the normal average high temperature. The aquifer uh, did go down three tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading and the allergens we do have. And I think that did not get updated. I beg your pardon. Mold is on the, the moderate side right now. Here's what it feels like when you step out or excuse me, as far as the uh, water vapor imagery, we've got a little bit of moisture along in the atmosphere. We're going to have plenty of sunshine, maybe a couple of uh, high wispy clouds out there throughout the day. But yeah, enough sunshine to really, really help to uh, heat things up. And once again, CPS Energy is asking if you can cut back between the hours of 2 and 7 p.m., the, the hottest portion of the day, because there's going to be a big demand uh, with all those air conditioners running later on today. Mostly cloudy, humid this morning, and then it's going to be mostly sunny, hot, humid, a little bit of a breeze, heat index well up into the hundreds. So you definitely want to take it easy if you're outside. Sunny and hot the next couple of days, not much of a change. Morning clouds, afternoon sunshine, that 24-hour cycle we go through. The weekend, there is the chance right now for a couple of showers, a small disturbance, not a great chance, is going to be working its way into the area. And that's also going to knock temperatures down a few more degrees. So we'll be hovering right around low to mid 90s over the weekend. We'll take any break we can get. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Good morning, everybody. Well, we're keeping our watchful eye here off 35 at Watson Lane. You see some flashing lights. That's because there is some construction going on out there. Uh, should be wrapping up, but we know that this is affecting the north and southbound lanes of 35 right near New Braunfels. And as you can see, uh, traffic moving a little bit slow out there from this shot at Trans Guide, which is a good sign for our drivers. They're giving a courtesy to our tech stop workers that are out there working to improve the road. So be sure to take it slow if you're coming in or going out towards that area. But more construction to be on the lookout for right here off Loop 410 southbound at Ray Ellison Boulevard. You can see that we have a little bit of a slowdown there in those northbound lanes of 410, but thankfully still early enough to where we're not seeing any big delays out there because of this construction. Taking a wider look at things, uh, it's still pretty quiet right now. We're going to get to some few construction sites a little bit later on in the show, but right now the morning commute is looking pretty good, and those inbound times looking pretty good as well if you're coming into the downtown San Antonio area from Bernie on I-10, 25 minutes right now, and right now we're looking at 26 minutes coming in from 281 in Bulverde and 25 coming in from 35 and New Braunfels. And one last look at Trans Guide. Pretty quiet morning so far. We did have a few crashes that since have resolved, but we're watching things closely here in the traffic lab. We'll keep you updated coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police are trying to figure out how a man was shot and killed late last night. It happened in the 2000 block of East South Cross on the city's southeast side near Highway 281. SAPD says a man in his mid 50s was somehow shot in the face and managed to drive to a Dollar General store while on the phone with his wife. Police say the man was pronounced dead at the scene once officers got there. 
Right now, investigators don't know what led up to the shooting. This morning, there are calls for the FDA to authorize COVID vaccines for younger children as quickly as possible. ABC's Dan Lieberman has the latest from New York. COVID doesn't care about your age, doesn't care about your health. It doesn't care about anything. These words from a COVID patient in Texas ringing loudly this morning as the Delta variant rips through parts of the U.S. at a record pace, with children now being sent to the hospital at a rate of almost four times higher than a month ago, with more than 94,000 pediatric cases. Children are experiencing more d severe disease. They come in in respiratory failure. They often require hospitalization in the pediatric intensive care unit. The surge prompting the American Academy of Pediatrics to call on the FDA to authorize vaccines for five to 11 year olds as quickly as possible. This is not a moment to blow off this infection on children. For some kids, the shot came too late. In Virginia, 17 year old Shwanda Corpru died just four days before she was scheduled to get the vaccine. Her aunt urging people to take the virus seriously. I don't want to see anybody else have to bury, you know, their little sibling or little daughter or anything like that. It's really heartbreaking. Across the country, more than 450 deaths now being reported each day, up by more than 50 percent in the last week. Florida now requesting 300 ventilators from the federal government. This as the state's governor now threatening to withhold the salaries of school superintendents and school board members who enforce mask mandates. In Texas, more districts appear willing to defy state orders and will require masks, even if that means paying a fine. I'd rather take that consequence than have uh, the health of students and staff and families uh, on my mind. Dan Lieberman, ABC News, New York. And San Antonio ISD students started school yesterday, and according to district officials, 99% of parents support a recommendation for students and staff to wear masks at school, while the rest opted for their children not to wear a mask indoors. Meanwhile, many students say they were just happy to be back at school. In the morning, I felt, I felt kind of anxious, but then I just saw my friend, so calmed me down a little bit. The district held a COVID-19 testing event last week and plans on hosting vaccination events at their largest high schools in the near future. Overwhelmed healthcare systems and exhausted nurses adding to a growing nursing shortage. A local medical assistant who just applied to nursing school is witnessing it firsthand. She says pop-up clinics are brutal and the days are long with little to no breaks. Some nurses have to be fully decked out in PPE gear, sometimes while outside in the summer heat. When you start to feel faint, when you start to feel sick, I've seen some of the older nurses actually sit down and almost pass out because they're so tired. And for that reason, a lot of them already left and resigned. A 2019 Texas Center for Nursing Workforce study showed a projected shortage of 57,000 nurses by the year 2032. But according to an associate dean at UT Health San Antonio's nursing school, their applications have actually doubled since last year. Students typically start caring for patients about a month into the program. The current graduation rate is at about 92%. In hopes of keeping more people out of the hospital, an infusion center will open up at the Freeman Coliseum's Expo Hall later today. The facility is meant to help administer COVID-19 antibodies that can help a COVID patient fight the virus before symptoms worsen. The last time this facility was set up, 3,000 patients were treated. The facility has the capacity to treat about 150 patients per day. Each patient would need a doctor's order before receiving the antibody treatment free of charge. Remember that people can and develop antibodies before catching the virus by getting the vaccine. Right now it's 508, about 78 degrees. And still ahead, a look at how some Amazon sellers are offering refunds worth more than the original price in order to delete negative reviews. Interesting. And does getting the coronavirus vaccine protect you from getting what some medical professionals are calling long COVID? We're taking a closer look next. And taking a look outside with a live cam, a little humid out there at 78 degrees, but it got hot yesterday afternoon. We are expecting another hot day, but we'll be checking in with Mike about what we can expect throughout the week in just a minute. 512, welcome back to GMSA. Long COVID, that's what the medical community is calling post-COVID symptoms that can last for weeks or months after you're infected with the virus. 
But does getting the vaccine protect you from long COVID? Sarah Costa takes a look at what's being done to find out. Long COVID, it's what the CDC is calling a wide range of new returning or ongoing health problems people can experience four or more weeks after first being infected with the virus that causes COVID-19. Can you get long COVID if you are vaccinated then infected with COVID? Well, it's unclear, but researchers are studying the chances of long-term symptoms developing in anyone who might get infected after vaccination, according to the Associated Press. The COVID-19 vaccines in use around the world are effective at preventing severe illness and death from the coronavirus, but some people do get infected after the shots. With such breakthrough cases, health experts say the vaccines should help lessen the severity of any illness people experience. But researchers are also looking at whether those breakthrough cases could lead to long COVID, which is when people experience persistent returning or new symptoms a month or more after an infection. Some estimates indicate about 30% of unvaccinated COVID-19 patients develop long-term symptoms, including shortness of breath, fatigue, difficulty concentrating, insomnia, and brain fog, the Associated Press says. A small study from Israel published recently found apparent long COVID-19 in several health workers with breakthrough infections. They developed mild symptoms, including cough, fatigue and weakness that persisted for at least six weeks. Researchers don't know why symptoms linger, but believe some symptoms reflect lung scarring or damage to other organs from severe initial infections, according to the Associated Press. Another theory suggests that the virus may linger in the body and trigger an immune response that leads to the symptoms. I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Guys, back to you. 514, still about 78 degrees. And coming up next, if you just can't get enough of mowing the yard, we're going to tell you about a new lawn mowing simulator made just this, for you. This has got Myco Strange written all over it. <laughs> what can I do with less asthma? With Depixin, I can do more. Oh, yard work. Princess! Teamwork. Long walks. Okay. Game on! That's how you do more with Depixin, which helps prevent asthma attacks. Depixin not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function with better breathing in as little as two weeks. It can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here are some of the important Depixin can cause serious allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis. Get help right away if you have rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection, and don't change or stop your asthma treatments, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Hey, come on. Just ask your asthma specialist about Depixin. In today's Tech Bytes, some Amazon sellers are reportedly tracking down customers to delete bad reviews. Some people have been offered refunds worth more than the price of a product to remove a negative review. Amazon says it's a policy violation and it does not share customer emails with third-party sellers. Instagram is now testing ads in its shop tab. The ads will either be a single image or several of them, and users can access products through the ads if they're interested. It's unclear how long the testing will continue. And finally, a video game that a suburban dad would love. This is the Lawn Mowing Simulator. It allows you to ride your favorite Toro or Skag across the countryside. There's even a career mode where you can start your own lawn mowing business. The Cutting Edge game is being released this week. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. 518. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos about all those flashing lights there at I-35. Hey, good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Yeah, a little bit busy this morning when it comes to construction. 35 at Watson does show that we do have some flashing lights out there, and that is because construction is wrapping up. Uh, this is a north and southbound lanes. You can see, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, that traffic is moving just a little bit slow out there, but that construction should be wrapping up here uh, later this morning, but uh, still seeing a little bit of it out here off Loop 410 southbound at Ray Ellison Boulevard. Just check the shot at 
Internet Trans Guide. Looks like that should be wrapping up as well. Uh, but overall, it's been a morning of construction and things going on here. Uh, we're going to take you up here to 1604 and 281. Uh, there's going to be an alt closure of alternating westbound and eastbound lanes from Stone Oak Parkway to 281 for signage installation. Now, this is well underway already. It's been going on from Monday and should be wrapping up by Friday the 13th. Pretty spooky date there, but 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. So something for overnight commuters to be on the lookout for right now. But overall, it's been shaping up to be pretty quiet so far. We did spot a few crashes a little bit earlier on this morning, but thankfully uh, those have quickly resolved and things are looking good. So a good time to head out and grab that cup of coffee. We're going to put the rotating uh, shot here at Transcode and show you how things are looking right now. I 10 at the Y 35 at Topper Wine getting a little bit busier. And I do have to say uh, yesterday I got a few messages from viewers on Facebook and Twitter saying that they loved that bus uh, graphic that we shared yesterday. So be on the lookout for those buses when you see them later today. We'll show that a little bit later on here on GMSC, but pretty helpful for I think everybody uh, that's going to be out on the roads. Yeah, the kiddos going back to speed that flashing stop sign. Yep. Yes. Yes, that indeed. time of year and also wow I think it's too too soon for that but beautiful picture wow, that's <laughs> no. quite a bumper crop this summer Mike wow oh my goodness gracious that squash looks absolutely fantastic yes. and I can't are those apples or pears kind of look like, like pears don't they, they right like pears yeah and nice still, cantaloupe there to the left and right beautiful beautiful still looks very fallish from this it, it does yeah, yeah uh -huh. even though it sure doesn't feel like but yeah it's uh, yeah and, and a lot of things I've got some herbs growing in the garden those things are just going like gangbusters. Buddy of mine posted pictures the other day, Mike. He has like a million different kinds of uh, peppers in his yard right now, uh, his garden. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, and he likes spicy, which is good. And now the thing, because we've had a lot of rain and that helped out, obviously, but now you need to do some watering lawns and everything else because there's really not much of anything in the forecast. A small chance coming in here by the weekend. We're starting off with clouds uh, right now. High temperature yesterday, 96 in town. Once again, it's kind of unusual that we only had three triple digit readings. Now, again, in your backyard, it may have been up to triple digits, but you know, 94 Uvalde, Pleasant did hit 97. We're going to be up right around the same boat uh, later on today, 96 degrees degrees, mid 90s in and around the metropolitan area get normal and this is splitting hairs, but it goes down in the record books. Normal high temperature 97, so we'll be one degree below that in. Uh, but the heat index is going to be the big problem, especially to the south and to the uh, southeast and over there toward Del Rio with these heat index readings. You know, Gonzales up to 105. It's where it's just really, really hard for your body to cool itself. And again, got to emphasize all of these numbers are in the shade. You get out in the direct sun and you are not only feeling the air temperature, but the sun is just beating down on you and heating you up. So it feels even hotter than that. So if you do want to you know, do anything in the morning or do anything outside in the morning is obviously the best opportunity for it. All right, here's a long range computer model and uh, you know, a couple of clouds hanging around here later on today and there will be again. This is that broad brush a couple of showers down along the coastal plain. Just a few of them here and there. Same thing on Thursday, same thing on Friday. Then as we go on in toward the weekend, again, those few showers. If you are heading down to the coast this weekend, I wouldn't really worry about all this. But again, that just broad brushes in some of those sea breeze showers. By Sunday and Monday, though, there is a disturbance which is going to be lying up to the north. And that's going to touch off a few more showers, maybe even a couple of thunderstorms. Although the majority of those would be pretty much uh, confined up there to the uh, north going into Sunday and Monday. Got a chance of rain, though, in the the forecast. So 91 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and plenty of sunshine out there. It's going to be hot. 96 heat index well up into the hundreds, kind of breezy today as well with the wind out of the southeast about 10 20 miles per hour gusting at times. More of the same tomorrow, more of the same Thursday down a notch or two on Friday. A couple of extra clouds around here and a very small chance for some showers over the weekend. A better opportunity maybe Sunday and Monday and that'll hold temperatures down a few extra clouds. We'll take Still it. Still hot and humid though. Yes, yeah. I agree. I had to wait outside in line, in the line of parents, but outdoors <laughs> for my daughter to get out. And uh, my portion of the line wasn't in the shade for, <laughs> for a bit, so I was just But like, was it part of you happy to be back to that ritual? Yeah. In a way, you know? It, it was, it was nice to be back though, even, you know, even though it was, I was glowing at the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very nice to be back. <laughs> right now it's 523, about 78 degrees. And up next in your morning spotlight, we're going to tell you about an all-star comedy concert to mark the 9-11 20th anniversary. Plus, a first look at Catherine Zeta-Jones as Morticia Adams. Two comedians with strong connections to the events of September 11th. 
2001 are marking the upcoming anniversary with some famous friends. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. We can't fund these programs, you can. John Stewart has been a fierce advocate for 9-11 first responders, and Pete Davidson lost his father in that attack. Now they're teaming up with some of comedy's biggest names for NYC Still Rising After 20 Years, a comedy celebration. They say the event September 12th at New York's Madison Square Garden is meant to honor the city's resilience. Catherine Zeta-Jones is joining the Adams Family. She'll guest star as the matriarch Morticia in the Netflix series Wednesday. Luis Guzman will play her husband Gomez, with Jenna Ortega as the title character in the Tim Burton Supernatural Mystery Series. Got a wishbone drying on the window sill in my kitchen Just in case I wake up and realize I've chosen wrong Here's the latest from Lord, a rooftop performance of her newest song, Stoned at the Nail Salon, with Jack Antonoff on guitar. The 24-year-old singer-songwriter's third studio album, Solar Power, is due out August 20th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And time now is 528 and about 78 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA, that massive $1.2 trillion Bipartisan infrastructure package is poised for a final vote in the Senate today. We're taking a closer look at what the package could mean for the average American. Plus, the details on an important recall involving some popular Panera Bread soups. You've probably seen a reality TV show or two, but have you ever seen one set in outer space? Ahead on GMSA at 6, we'll tell you about a pair of shows that would send people to the final frontier. Making headlines this morning, senators in Washington expected to hold a final vote on President Biden's massive infrastructure legislation later today. And taking a look outside with live cam this Tuesday morning, we're at a humid 78 degrees. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday, the 10th of August. Thanks for joining us this morning. I hope you had a good Monday and especially all of the, those who went back to school, the kiddos, uh, the teachers, staff members and the parents. Now it's about getting back into a routine and we're glad to be a part of you waking up. Let's check in with Mike Ostrage back in house after being off as well. Yes, indeed. And boy, it sure was hot yesterday afternoon when the kids come home from school and that's going to be the situation today, tomorrow, Thursday, slight break in temperatures maybe by the uh, end of the week. 79 degrees right now. We're three above normal dew points at 75 so that means it's really hot it's really humid out there a uh, breeze out of the south at 14 it will be breezy today so hopefully that can, helps out a little bit mold is on the high side low amounts of pigweed as well as fall elm showing up and cps energy is asking that you lower your energy usage if possible between two and seven o'clock this afternoon going into the early evening hours just after dinner time just because it's going to be a very high uh, energy demand day because of those very hot temperatures 91 at noon and it's going to be up to 96 later on today of course that doesn't even factor in the uh, the heat or the humidity because the heat index is going to feel like it's well up into the hundreds later on this afternoon like i said more of the same the next couple of days hopefully some uh, some rain comes in here very small chance but something to think about talk about that coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority steve Cavazos, what's going on sir hey good morning mike uh you know keeping a watchful eye on the roads here things are looking pretty good so far. 35 at Randolph shows a few folks out there on the roadways right now. I 10 at Frio uh, just seen a few folks uh, again getting their day started early with us. Uh, we did spot some construction uh, that has since been wrapping up in some areas and uh, outlying areas of San Antonio. But let's go ahead and take a look at the map right now and show you uh, what we're looking at. Uh, pretty green so far. Seen a little bit of a slowdown there on 410, but nothing too major to report right now. Thankfully, it's a good time to get out the door and get that morning started early. Grab that cup of coffee because things are looking good again so far. So let's check out these inbound times. As you can see, we're seeing pretty green except here in Lavernia. 29 minutes coming in from I-10 and Seguin right now to the downtown San Antonio area, but 24 minutes, a little bit of a slowdown there in 87 and Lavernia. 28 minutes uh, coming in from Floydesville. So again, the morning has been seeing a few uh, slowdowns there, but again, it's picking up pretty nicely at this hour. I-10 at the Y. Just a few people out on the roadways, but coming up later, we'll have gas prices and more friendly reminders as we get those kiddos back to school and get them back in that routine. That's coming up later this morning on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen.
It may be back to square one when it comes to renovation plans on a north side home. The house in the 300 block of West Hollywood Avenue went up in flames overnight. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, we understand that people were still living in the home even though it was undergoing renovations. Now, firefighters tell us that there were five people who lived in this home. Uh, they all got out safely, but their house took a pretty heavy hit, as you can tell from the soot on the windows there. I think the video can give you a little better look. The fire broke out just before 1230 this morning. And again, five people inside the home at the time, according to firefighters, they all made it out safely. They say that this house was undergoing renovations at the time. Uh, they found flames coming out of the doors and windows, though, when they arrived. Firefighters were able to put out the fire, but not before it did as much as $150,000 in damage to this home. So uh, those people have been uh, displaced at this time. Uh, the cause of this fire here is still under investigation, although, again, firefighters say there were renovations going on uh, at the time. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Today in D.C., senators are expected to hold their final vote on the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. CNN's Brett Conway has a look at what that bill could mean for the average American and what else needs to get done to make it happen. Closing in on a $1.2 trillion infrastructure deal. This will do a whole lot of good for America, and the Senate can be proud it has passed this. And passing it is the plan. The Senate is set to hold its final vote on the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act today. Politically, it's a bipartisan victory. For the country, it's also about competing globally. We're falling behind where we once were in the world. And our rivals, slowly but surely, are pulling close behind us. For each state, it could add up to billions in improvements. The White House's website breaks it down state by state. There's a fact sheet for all 50 states and Puerto Rico with how much money each could get for everything from road and bridge work to public transportation, electric vehicle chargers and broadband. For thousands of people, this infrastructure plan could mean work. It's going to create at least 650,000 new high-skilled, high-paying jobs. And it could mean millions of jobs over the course of the next several years. But it carries a big price tag, and enactment depends on what happens over the next several weeks and months. Right now, the Senate is working on the $3.5 trillion budget resolution. Then the resolution and the infrastructure bill will both head to the House, which means more negotiations. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The U.S. Department of Justice will review whether previously withheld information related to the September 11th attacks can be disclosed to the public. A DOJ spokesperson says the government advised a federal court that the FBI had recently closed an investigation related to certain 9-11 hijackers. Now the FBI is reviewing those records to determine if they should be made public. Agency says it will disclose that information on a rolling basis as quickly as possible. President Biden released a statement praising the decision by the Justice Department, saying it follows through on his campaign promise to have the department work to release the records. According to recently filed court documents, unaccompanied migrant children are reporting poor conditions at a temporary facility in Pecos, Texas. Those conditions include long stays at the facility, undercooked food, and long waits for medical care. It's the latest in a series of issues raised by children at temporary facilities overseen by the Department of Health and Human Services. The facility in Pecos is meant to be temporary, but another teen said a sibling has been there for more than 60 days. So far, there's been no word from the HHS about that facility. 538, about 78 degrees. And still ahead, what you need to know about a recall involving a popular Panera Bread soup product. Up next, why doctors are saying unvaccinated COVID patients who survived the virus should consider, consider getting a vaccine sooner than later. And taking a look outside with live cam this Tuesday morning. It's humid out there and it will be warm, but that's usually what we expect in August. We'll be checking in with Mike later on. It's exactly 541. Welcome back and good morning. A new study shows COVID-19 survivors who do not get vaccinated are more than twice as likely to get reinfected. The good news is the CDC is now reporting that COVID-19 survivors who do get vaccinated get an extra boost of immune protection. Sarah Costa explains this immune boost. 
According to a new Gallup survey, one of the main reasons Americans cite for not planning to get vaccinated is the belief that they're protected since they already had COVID-19, says the Associated Press. From the beginning, health authorities have urged survivors to get the broader protection vaccination promises. While the shots aren't perfect, they are providing strong protection against hospitalization and death even from the Delta variant. Scientists say infection does generally leave survivors protected against a serious reinfection, at least with a similar version of the virus. But blood tests have signaled that protection drops against worrisome variants. Dr. Anthony Fauci says, quote, there's no doubt that vaccinating a COVID-19 survivor enhances both the amount and breadth of immunity so that you cover not only the original virus, but the variants, end quote. The Associated Press says in a separate recent study, Rush University researchers reported that just one vaccine dose gives a previously infected a dramatic boost in virus fighting immune cells. More than people who have never been infected get from two shots. Other recent studies published in Science and Nature show the combination of a prior infection and vaccination also broadens the strength of people's immunity against a changing virus. It's what one virologist is calling hybrid immunity. The result is essentially a library of antibody recipes that the body can choose from after future exposures, and that process is stronger when vaccination triggers the immune system's original memory of fighting the actual virus. I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Back to you. And time now, it's 543 and about 78 degrees. Next details on a recall involving a popular Panera Bread soup. And welcome back. It's about 545 in your morning consumer headlines. More than 6,300 pounds of Panera Bread's ready to eat chicken tortilla soup has been recalled. That's because the 16 ounce containers may have been contaminated with glove pieces. The USDA, USDA notice says a soup maker Blunt Fine Foods received several consumer complaints reporting pieces of glove in the product, but no reports of illness. The recalled soup was made on July 1st and has a use by date of September 19th. September 9th. People who bought it are being told to throw it away or return it to the store. Record amount of job openings were added in June. More than 10 million are now available. In a report to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, most of the jobs are in professional and business services, hotels, and restaurants. Many people looking for jobs are still faced with some challenges such as childcare and concerns about catching the virus at work. In June, the number of hires rose by 6.7 million. The layoff level did not budge at all. And time now is 546. Time to check in with Stephen Cavazos. Thanks so much, guys. Well, you know, when we see those flashing lights and barrels, we're going to look into what's going on out there. Uh, our friends at Transguide were able to pull up this shot for us here at State Highway 151 at Loop 410 West. You can see from this shot, only one lane is opened right now, and that's because there is construction going on out there. It's bridge work happening there, and it's a full closure of the westbound frontage road at Loop 410, and it's out State Highway 151 on the west side of San Antonio. Now, this has already been going on, as you just saw from that shot at Transguide. It started on Sunday, but should be wrapping up by Saturday. That's August 14th. Uh, it's an overnight deal, so it's 8 p.m. in the evening to 5 in the morning. So a little bit past that time that TxDOT said that this would be wrapping up. So just use some caution driving through that area when you see those flashing lights and other flashing lights you need to be on the lookout for. As we mentioned, those bus passing rules. Now it's still early enough where parents may be getting their kiddos ready to get to the bus stop this early in the morning. But when you see those buses picking up or dropping off those kids, uh, make sure that you stop if you're traveling down a two lane street and if you're traveling down a multi lane road. Uh, the same rule applies. Uh, vehicles traveling in both directions must stop when those flashing lights come on. Uh, the rules a little bit different though. If you're driving down a divided highway, vehicles traveling in that opposite direction just need to slow down. But remember, if you see that bus ahead of you and they pull out that, that stop sign with those flashing lights, just be sure to pause your car and make sure those kids get to where they need to be on time and of course safely. One last look here at Transguide State Highway 151 at Loop 410. Looks like they may be wrapping up, so just use some caution when you're heading out the road this morning. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. And I see the angel behind yeah. you. Cool picture. Not sure about anybody else, as the caption says, but see an angel. And there's the, the wings of it right there and the body. That's a very neat picture. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect shot. All right, clouds starting off this morning. Boy, is it warm and humid out there. 79 degrees. 80 Casterville, Stinson, Canyon Lake at 80, Tarpley's at 76. And for most everybody, these dew points measure moisture in the atmosphere. 
well up into the mid and upper 70s, which means it's fog up your glasses, almost uh, kind of steam bath when you walk outside and heat index readings. 86 Castroville, Stinson, 85 Canyon Lake, 84 in Pleasanton, and 83 is uh, what it feels like out there at the airport. Couple of uh, low clouds. You can see the satellite picture loops back through 12 hours. Here come some of those low clouds developing, and that's the, the case that we'll see tomorrow morning, next morning, and so on. The, the usual 24 hour cycle we go through more sunshine in the afternoon. And around the country, this is a very kind of summer look to this weather pattern here. A lot of activity up there in Canada in the northern part of the United States. But for us, notice how there's kind of a big giant clockwise rotation covering about the southeastern third of the country. And that's the usual kind of satellite picture you'd expect to see at this time of year. And that's why there's nothing going on. Now down here in the tropics, there is a tropical depression right now, number six, and it is very likely, Hurricane Center says, likely to become a, a tropical storm. It'd be tropical storm Fred by later on this afternoon, actually. And that's just gonna work its way across the Antilles, across Hispaniola, and then just right around Cuba and then move in toward Florida and sort of graze the west coast of Florida. And this is going to be by the weekend and then it should continue to work its way up into the uh, southeastern United States. And as far as the uh, Atlantic season goes right now, I've got to get a different clicker. Forgot to grab this one for this computer, but we're not, you know, we've had a pretty quick start and then things sort of uh, sort of slowed down just a little bit. But the uh, hurricane season is just really starting to uh, get going and we do peak in about a month well, in exactly a month and then it will begin to uh, taper off. So we've only gone through started June 1st goes through the end of November. So we're going to start to see a little bit more activity. It looks like there might be some more activity out there as well. High pressure is uh, getting in control as you saw in the uh, satellite picture and uh, that's going to remain in control through the rest of the week, keeping us very hot and then it's going to sort of uh, break apart again once we get in toward the weekend and that's going to allow some little disturbances to work their way in here, and that's what's going to give us the chance for a couple of showers to move in by primarily the end of the weekend. 91 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature up to 96. It's going to be breezy, so it takes a little bit of the edge off, and the heat index, though, is going to be well up into the low hundreds later on today. Same thing tomorrow, same thing on Thursday morning clouds, afternoon sunshine, temperatures what you would expect in August. And then with a few more clouds around here, that's going to be knocking a couple of degrees off temperatures going in toward the weekend and a couple of showers around here, maybe a thunderstorm, especially Sunday, Monday. I think most of those will be up to the, <clears throat> excuse me, up to the north. That'd be kind of nice. Yeah, mix things little, up a little bit. We'll stray one here and there. Yeah, not too bad after a hot week. Yeah, real hot. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. 551, about 78 degrees. And Oscar winner Jennifer Hudson's latest movie finds the singer performing as one of the singers who influenced her career. We're going to have a special preview of Respect next. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick 3, 074, Fireball 3, Daily 4, 0283, Fireball 5. Cash 5, 8, 16, 21, 30, 34. And your Texas two-step, 5, 13, 16, 24. Bonus ball 15. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the latest on the pandemic and the pressure to authorize vaccines for kids as COVID cases in young people surge at their highest level of the pandemic yet. Dr. Richard Besser, pediatrician and former acting director of the CDC, joins us live. That plus much more coming up on GMA. We'll see you all soon. Jennifer Hudson portrays the role of a lifetime in the Aretha Franklin biopic, Respect. She's the queen of soul. She's an icon and a legend. And so to have this assignment that massive, knowing that is exciting, but it's scary at the same time. Hudson's biggest challenge was staying true to the person Aretha Franklin was at different points in her life to really experience it like she did in her life. If I'm recreating these moments, 
And then me being Jennifer Hudson, being an artist who's a fan of Aretha, who has covered her songs many a times, now I have to be the actress playing her in moments where she was just learning the song. Okay. You really like it? We love it. Re, 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 re. So that meant I had to unlearn the song and approach it as if, oh, I, we, we're recreating this. So in her time, I don't know the song. She didn't know the song, you know? So that was a challenge. You see what she is. She's a miracle. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Next Tuesday, we're taking a deep dive into the February winter storm. It's a special collaboration between KSAT Explains and the KSAT 12 Defenders. We take a closer look at what really went wrong and what needs to change to prevent another weather disaster. It all airs next Tuesday right here on KSAT 12 at 9 p.m. Glad you're with us on this Tuesday morning. Ahead in our next hour, Cowboys training camp continues. One player getting a lot of attention. We'll tell you why. San Antonio police trying to figure out what led up to an overnight shooting on the city's southeast side. We have details on that. Overnight house fire north of downtown causes hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damages. We have the latest on that. As Stephen Cavazos is keeping an eye on this right now, 151 at 410. He said things would start to clear up out there where there were some barrels and flashing lights and it looks like that is that has happened just as he uh, predicted right now we'll check in with Mike Ostrage coming up after the break top of the hour you're watching GMSA this morning San Antonio Crime Stoppers asking for your help solving a murder case you could receive a cash reward we'll have details and taking a look outside with live cam this morning. It's a humid 78 degrees out there and it's gonna be a humid day. We're gonna check in with Mike right now. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Time to rise and shine. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, the 10th of August. Happy Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. And I hope you had a, a good Monday back at work or back at school for a lot of you guys. It's going to be a good Tuesday because Mike Osterhage is back with his morning show family here on GMSA. Good to have you back, Mike. Thank you very okay. much, sir. Welcome back to you as well. Thanks. Even though you were back yesterday, but uh, yes, boy, you know, afternoons, it's really tough because we're not used to it this summer. So like I was mentioning earlier, going across the grocery store parking lot yesterday was just like, yeah, quite a reality check. Isn't yeah, it? you almost want an umbrella just for the parking lot. <laughs> well, like you said, you were waiting in line yes. to pick up your daughter from school yesterday. At school, so and there was a portion of the line that was not in the shade and I felt that. Anything you can do to find some shade today. That's a pretty good idea and uh, find a friend with a pool. 83 degrees is the heat index right now. 86 Stinson, Castroville, 85 is what feels like up in Canyon Lake. And uh, we've got a lot of mold out there. Pigweed and Fall Elm are both on the uh, low side. By the way, CPS Energy is asking if you can, if possible, to reduce your energy usage between 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock this afternoon into uh, this evening right after dinner time because, uh, boy, the air conditioners are just going to be getting a workout today and the next couple of days. Temperatures, we may drop another degree or two in the next few hours. Also, uh, it's going to be kind of breezy today. We've got a decent wind right now, and that's going to help to sort of take the edge off with southeasterly wind uh, to 10 to 20 miles per hour. 91 at noon, and then high temperature today up to 96, although with the humidity still hanging around here, that's going to feel more like the low hundreds and getting up around 105 or so, especially down to the uh, east and to the southeast later on this afternoon. Very hot, very humid, more typical August weather through the next couple of days. Then a very small chance for a couple of showers going to be moving into the picture by especially later in the weekend. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, and so far it's been kind of quiet out there. Yeah, I think so. I think we get it safe to say that we've seen uh, not a lot of issues out on the roadway, just some construction going on right now. But, uh, you know, usually around this hour is when we start to see cert certain things picking up. Uh, so I have a few flashing lights out here at 35.
25 at Watson where some construction was going on out there a little bit earlier, but some of these shots at Transkai do show uh, some are off to a good start this morning. Others uh, seeing some stalls right now. 35 northbound at Olympia Parkway seeing a stall right by the forum out there near Live Oak. So uh, again, check those vehicles because we see another stall reported out here off US 90 at Lackland. Uh, right now, that seems to be the only issue that we've really spotted out there aside from that construction, but inbound times are looking pretty good. If you plan on traveling to San Antonio from any of these neighboring communities right now, Pleasanton 28 minutes on 37 right now, and we're looking at 16 minutes coming in from 35 and Lytle and about 19 minutes coming in from Highway 90 and Castroville. Let's go ahead and take another look at Transguide 281 or US 90. We should say at 35. Yeah, a few folks out there right now on the roadways, and if you're just waking up with us, stay with us. We'll have more on your morning commute here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, cleanup underway following an overnight house fire happened just before 1230 this morning in the Triana block of Hollywood Avenue. That's north of downtown near San Pedro and Hildebrandt. Firefighters say heavy flames were shooting out of the front door and side windows when they arrived. No one was hurt, but the family of five that lives there will be displaced. Damages are estimated at around $150,000. No word yet on what sparked the fire. San Antonio police and crime stoppers are asking for your help in solving a murder case. Happened back on July 1st at a northeast side apartment complex. Police say the person on your screen, Raymond Sneed, was shot and killed at the Alamo Estates in the 8,000 block of Mid Crown Drive. Officers do not have any suspects in custody at this time. However, they say a witness saw a woman leaving the scene at the time of the incident. If you have any information that could help solve the case, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP and you could be eligible for a $5,000 reward. In your other morning headlines, four U.S. lawmakers urging U.S. Attorney General to prohibit prosecutors from seeking the death penalty. That as the Justice Department reviews whether the government's methods of capital punishment are fair and humane. The Attorney General put a moratorium on capital punishment for federal defendants early last month. In a letter to lawmakers said, quote, continuing to seek capital sentences undermines the entire purpose of the review and is a conflict of interest, end quote. The Justice Department has not responded to a request for comment. There are currently 49 men on federal death row. A sweeping infrastructure bill is nearing a final vote in the Senate. Lawmakers are set to pass the bipartisan $1.2 trillion infrastructure proposal as early as this morning. It includes billions of dollars for projects focused on public transportation, broadband, and water projects. The focus now shifts to budget. Democrats are releasing their $3.5 trillion resolution that is far less popular with the Republicans who are opposed to raising the debt ceiling. Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the infrastructure bill will go nowhere in the House until the budget Budget proposal is passed. Turning now to the coronavirus here in Bear County, we continue to see about 1,000 new cases a day according to the seven day average. Hospitalizations continue to rise with 1,197 COVID 19 patients, 314 are in intensive care, 181 are on ventilators. This morning, the alarming surge in COVID cases fueled by the Delta variant is now targeting kids by the thousands. Health officials and local leaders are scrambling to protect their kids with calls for the FDA to authorize vaccines for younger children as quickly as possible. ABC's Dan Lieberman has the latest. COVID doesn't care about your age, doesn't care about your health, it doesn't care about anything. These words from a COVID patient in Texas as the Delta variant rips through parts of the U.S. at a record pace, with children now being sent to the hospital at a rate of almost four times higher than a month ago, with more than 94,000 pediatric cases. The surge prompting the American Academy of Pediatrics to call on the FDA to authorize vaccines for 5 to 11-year-olds as quickly as possible. This is not a moment to blow off this infection on children. In Virginia, 17-year-old Shwanda Corpru died just four days before she was scheduled to get the vaccine. Her aunt urging people to take the virus seriously. I don't want to see anybody else have to bury, you know, their little sibling or little daughter or anything like that. It's really heartbreaking. In Texas, more districts appear willing to defy state orders and will require masks, even if that means paying a fine. I'd rather take that consequence than have uh, the health of students and staff and families uh, on my mind. Dan Lieberman, ABC News, New York. 607, about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, your morning sports brief. And one Dallas Cowboy turning some heads at training camp. We're going to tell you why. 
Close one last night in Vegas between the Spurs and Timberwolves. We've got us the latest from Summer League play. And taking a look outside with a live cam, it's 78 degrees for now. It's going to warm up to the 90s, but we may expect a little, little, little bit of rain by the weekend. We'll be checking in with Mike soon. winless in Salt Lake City. The Spurs kicking off summer league play in Vegas last night against the Timberwolves. San Antonio finds some rhythm in the second quarter. First round draft pick Joshua Prima drives inside for a quick turnaround jumper. Then a few minutes later, Trey Jones finds Primo behind the arc for three. Spurs up 33-32 early but trailed at the half. Fast forward to the fourth, Devin Vassell comes alive. He scores 15 of his team high 26 in the fourth, including a game tying three pointing with 44 seconds left. But Minnesota scores the game winner on the next possession. Spurs fall 91 89. Trey Jones was back in the lineup for the first time since, and he scored 16 points. I had to knock some rust off, um, but. I'm just trying to stick with it. Uh, something that you know the coaches were um, trying to stay on us about was um, picking it up on the defensive end. So I'm trying to be a leader for our team. I knew that if I were to pick it up on that end, um, the other guys would um, as well. During halftime of Spurs T Wolf Summer League, we were able to hear from Kelvin Johnson. He's the Spurs forward who helped Team USA win gold in Tokyo. His first pick for the select team to help prepare Team USA for the summer games, but was later promoted to the Olympic team when two players were forced to drop out. It didn't hit me yet. You know, I'm kind of like uh, still just living in the moment, but I think it's definitely uh, crazy. I think uh, you know, I'm 21 with a gold medal. I'm definitely blessed. And uh, some people got sick, some people got hurt, and uh, but we still maintained and uh, we came out with the gold. You know, uh, we didn't give in to what everybody was saying. Uh, we knew what we were capable of and we knew uh, what we had to do to win. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. On to Cowboys training camp. No question who the star has been this year. That title goes to second year wide receiver C.D. Lamb, who's made spectacular catches in Oxnard after an incredible rookie year where he made almost 1,000 yards receiving. <coughs> Excuse me. He's now gone viral on social with some of his catches, and he's getting more playing time at wideout than slot while his teammate Amari Cooper is still recovering after offseason ankle surgery. And that's a look at morning sports. And earlier this morning, there was a lot of construction out there, but things might look a little bit better. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, things are looking pretty good right now, uh, Steph. You know, we're seeing things, uh, people getting out on the roadways, I-10 at the Y, looking pretty good so far as we're getting the morning started. We're getting a few more people out on the roadways, as you can see from this shot at TransGuide right now. Other parts are looking pretty quiet, but uh, right now we do have some stalls right now. The first one here is US-90 westbound at Lackland. Uh, we did see an earlier stall 35 northbound at Olympia Parkway near the form at Live Oak, but that has since uh, resolved. But if you're experiencing any issues out on the roadway, just be sure to contact the Texot Hero program. We'll get their number up on the screen a little later this morning here on GMSA. We do want to get to some gas prices right now. We, uh, we didn't get a chance to get to this yesterday, but AAA is reporting that here in Bear County right now, the average gas price is 278 and around the state today, we're looking at 283 for that average gas price and around the country 318. Now, AAA does also report that that, nas that number that we're seeing nationally is the the, the highest price of gas that we've seen all year long. And they're saying a lot of this, uh, we're seeing a lot of variations when it comes to these gas prices right now. And that's because there's been an increase in demand, uh, largely due to that summer travel that we saw just a few throughout the months. But uh, of course, this is good to know if you're going to be heading to the gas station uh, sometime later this morning to fuel up before you drop the kiddos off at school later this morning. But right now, things are looking good if you plan to make that uh, part of your destination this morning. But we'll be watching things closely and giving you updates throughout the morning here on GMSA. Thank you, Stephen. We are creatures of habit, and boy, it's good to see the bus stop yep. forecast yes. back. Psych. Ready? Ready. Yes, Take ready. the shot. Here we go. Yay! It's back. <laughs> the wheels on the bus are still going round and round. Yes, they so are. Good. Temperatures this morning, very warm. We're uh, hovering right around 79, 78 uh, degrees right now. We may fluctuate a degree or two and plenty of humidity out there. We've got heat index readings that are well up into the 80s throughout much of the area. And then later on this afternoon, 96 high temperature, which is what you would expect this time of year. But of course, with the humidity, it's going to feel like it's well up into the low hundreds. At least we'll have a decent breeze out there this morning. 
morning and uh, or this afternoon. A southeasterly wind about 10 to uh, 20 miles per hour. So hopefully it kind of takes a bit of the edge off. And also another way to take the edge off is just find a barrel, fill it full of water and then jump in. As this guy did. Yep, good idea. Whatever the case may be, just uh, make your own pool, I guess. So. It looks very refreshing, actually. So uh, we are starting to see the glow of the morning sunrise. You can see a couple of breaks in the clouds here and there, but for the most part, we've got plenty of clouds hanging around, and then we'll see more sunshine later on today, and we'll go through that same sort of 24-hour cycle again tomorrow as well as on into Thursday. Then some subtle changes heading in toward the, the weekend. 79 right now, 80 Stinson, 80 Casterville, Canyon Lake, and again, those dew point temperatures, the measure moisture in the atmosphere. Uh, well up into the mid 70s. Of course, 60 you like to see below that you get up into the 70s. It's oppressive and then you get in the mid 70s and it's I would say just kind of ridiculous on the scale because it feels like a steam bath when you walk outside and those heat index readings 86 Stinson, Castroville 85 Canyon Lake right now. Satellite I mean, not a heck of a lot out there. There's some of the low clouds. You can see a little darker shade of gray moving on in. Then we'll see more sunshine. And again, around the country, there's not really much of anything. And if you sort of squint a little bit, you can see that big clockwise rotation around the southeastern part of the United States. And that is the, the high, which is now kind of plunked down on top of us, and it's pretty much in control. And that's the, the usual summertime feature, which we haven't really seen that much of this summer. And that's going to keep temperatures very hot for the next couple of days. 91 at noon today, partly cloudy skies. And then a high temperature, we get up to 96. Breezy going to feel like it's well up into the low hundreds later on. Again, that's in the shade. So if like Stephanie was talking about yesterday, you have to, you know, wait in line, pick the kids up from school or something, maybe take an umbrella just to keep the sun off you from beating down on top of you. And that's going to stay very hot and pretty humid the next few days. 94 Friday, a couple of more clouds will slide in here. There is a, uh, a feature which is going to kind of move down into northern part of our area primarily over the weekend. A few more clouds around here that may try and squeeze out a couple of showers. And again, along the coastal plain, a few sea breeze showers here and there. But later on this weekend, we do have a chance for some rain, albeit small. You know, it's weird. So I was out of town all last week and I was doing some yard work last night night and I noticed the cicadas had stopped chirping. So either I hit my head on something. <laughs> no, you're right about that. But I don't know. All of I a sudden it's like Somebody flipped a switch. I, I was out of town as well. I, I didn't really notice it too much yesterday yeah. at all. So all I noticed was when I got back in town, it's like the grass was <laughs> had yeah. yes. benefited from some of that rain. Again. <laughs> well, we had those big storms Thursday while yeah. you and I were gone. So yeah, the, the grass is like you've been neglecting us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they waited for you. <laughs> oh, lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Lawn. Six eighteen, about seventy eight degrees. And could we be getting a reality TV show like no other ahead on GMSA? We're going to tell you about a pair of shows in the works that would be set in the final frontier. Lots of vitamins A and C. And only 45 calories a serving. Good morning indeed. V8, the original plant-powered drink. Veg up. It's bountiful, grain-free. It's so healthy. Dot farm-raised chicken. It's good chicken. Mm, here come the accents. Blueberries and pumpkin. Wow. And spinach. That was my favorite bite so far. Try Beneful Grain-Free and our other Beneful recipes. Healthful, flavorful, Beneful. Washed your hands a lot today? Probably like 40 times. Hands feel dry? Like sandpaper. Introducing new Dove Hand Wash with five times moisturizer blend. Removes germs in seconds. Moisturizes for hours. Soft. Smooth. New Dove Hand Wash. In this morning's GMA First Look, a federal judge saying Norwegian Cruise Line can now require Florida passengers to provide proof of vaccination before boarding, going directly against Governor Ron DeSantis' orders. This is a victory for the cruise industry, at least for now. Just days ago, with the Delta variant surging, Carnival, Princess, and Hull in America announced that they are making masks mandatory for all passengers, regardless of vaccination status. Now this morning, nearly all of the companies tell ABC News they are trying to figure out how this new ruling applies to them. 
A number of cruise lines are going to be returning to Florida in the fall, and they're going to continue to watch and see how it plays out. And coming up at 7 a.m., an ABC News exclusive. We'll talk live to the president and CEO of Norwegian Cruise Line, Frank Del Rio. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. So the hottest new reality show isn't set in a house, on an obstacle course, or on the Jersey Shore. As Max Massey shows us, television producers are betting on a new location, the International Space Station. Two reality TV shows that are in the works would actually offer a first for viewers by taking them inside the International Space Station. As a member of the public will be awarded a multi-million dollar experience to space as a grand prize for both reality shows. The Discovery Channel, considering who wants to be an astronaut while a competitor, space hero, hoping to land on another station. The who wants to be an astronaut premise is simple and it relies on traditional reality TV tropes. Now here on Earth, contestants will vie for an all expenses paid trip to live on the ISS, the International Space Station for eight days. The as yet unknown variety of extreme challenges are designed to determine which competitors what they're going to have to have, and if they have it, to be a real astronaut. And passage to space will be provided by a Houston-based space broker, Axiom Space. While NASA hasn't confirmed that Axiom will even be able to secure a seat on a commercial rocket, Discovery, yeah, the TV station, is confident in their plans. Who wants to be an astronaut is entirely United States-based, but Space Hero is attempting to bring a global component to the TV in space sector. The privately funded Space Hero plans to start with 24 contestants from around the world, 12 men, 12 women, 12 from underdeveloped countries, and 12 from developed countries. They're gonna be put into a space village, kind of like a big brother house, but with wearable technology and biometrics testing. In the Space Hero house, activities and challenges will narrow down the list of candidates until there is only one person left. Naturally, the global audience will be encouraged to vote for their favorite would-be astronaut. NASA is seemingly on board with the expansion of the use of the International Space Station, and former Senator Bill Nelson, who was recently sworn in as the NASA Administrator, said he is open to different uses outside of routine research. Who wants to be an astronaut? Now currently taking applications through their online portal, Space Heroes applications, they open up December 21st. So guys, good luck, and I guess may the odds be ever in your favor. Back to you. Hunger Games reference. Oh my goodness. So it's been reported several times earlier this year that the Russians are leaving the ISS. They want to launch their own space station. And now we know why. <laughs> they don't want reality shows. No, they say it has to do with some sort of American sanctions. Right. But, uh, well, I think the reality show would be very stressful. I mean, it would be stressful just going to space, well, at least mm -hmm. for me. But, um, so, yeah. yeah, they're like, yeah, can you, I mean, watching them, what, duct tape to a wall to try to sleep? I mean, I don't, that'd be stressful. But you know what? I mean, people, people will watch because it's, it's very interesting mm -hmm. what they're doing up there. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what happens. Very scary, though. 626, yeah. about 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, new reports of Amazon sellers tracking down customers who left bad reviews. We're going to tell you what the retail giant has to say about that. And Katrina Weber will join us live with the latest on an overnight house fire here in San Antonio that has caused hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of damage. And a quick look out at the roads with Trans Guy. There's a look at 281 at Hildebrand, 1604 at Military Drive. Things are moving this morning. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos. A fire in this north side home overnight sends a family running for cover. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story coming up. A deadly overnight shooting on the city's southeast side has San Antonio police asking questions The details ahead. Outside with live cam, a few breaks in the clouds as the sun is starting to come up on your super early Tuesday morning. Good morning, Chair. It is Tuesday. It's the 10th of August. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a great Monday in the afternoon. It got kind of warm out there. How did the first day of school go for your daughter? Oh, thank you. Uh, it went good. Thank, thanks for asking. Uh, I was a little nervous as, you know, parents will be sometimes, <laughs> but thank goodness it went well. She came out smiling and well, full, of, full of energy and very excited about it. That's good to hear. Also good to hear Mike Ostrage is back in the yeah. house this morning. Good Welcome to see back. you, sir. Got Appreciate you, it. Your son's off to school again. Both sons yeah. off to school. Uh, the other one going back to college in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it it's that time of year already, and it is that time of year when it feels like August because we've been 
been kind of spoiled for most of the summer. But like you said, when you were waiting in line to, to pick up your daughter, it was really hot and toasty. So yes, it was. If you do have to, you know, take the dog for a walk, do anything outside, try and do it as early as possible because it's going to be another really hot and steamy one later on today. And as the experts say, don't wait till you're thirsty to start drinking water. Just continue to hydrate, and especially the kids if they're beginning, you know, football practice and, and band and cheer, whatever the case may be, being outside quite a bit. Lots and lots of water. So, yeah, as Mark was pointing out, a couple little breaks in the clouds here and there, but uh, basically cloudy skies this morning. 79 degrees. The dew point stands at 75, which means it's a steam bath out there. We do have a nice breeze out of the south at 13 miles per hour. Don't know with these kind of temperatures and humidity how much of a uh, wind chill effect that gives, but it does take some of the edge off. Mold is high. Pigweed, fall elm are both on the uh, the low side. CPS Energy is asking that you uh, try and conserve energy between two and seven o'clock because obviously uh, air conditioner is going to be working overtime today. Mostly cloudy, humid this morning, and then we'll have mostly sunny skies. Breezy, uh, still a, a decent breeze this afternoon. Heat index reading is going to be well up into the hundreds later on today. More of the same the next couple of days clouds humid in the morning more sunshine in the afternoon mid and leaning toward the upper 90s and then by the weekend a few more clouds around here and small chance i'll be a very small chance for a couple of showers and that should keep temperatures in the low leaning toward the uh, low to mid 90s over the weekend and into the latter part of the weekend more on that coming up in just a couple of minutes getting ready to hit the roads right now fire up the air conditioner <laughs> traffic authority steven casas what's going on yeah, thanks mike we got a few early birds out on the road with us this morning 281 at loop 410 shows like it's a little bit quiet right now but we're seeing uh, again a few more people getting their day started early. US 90, as you just saw, I 10 at Probent, uh, looking a little bit busier than uh, what we saw earlier this morning. Uh, thankfully, the issues haven't been too big, but uh, we have spotted a few slowdowns here. Let's go ahead and get right to it. 35 northbound at Division Avenue. This came in a little while ago, but uh, thankfully, I don't think it's there anymore. Just check the text dot website, but we're still seeing some of those stalls out there. That's the trending issue right now. Uh, this one here off I 10 eastbound at FM 1516 going up towards the Gein. Uh, also, also seeing another stall right here off uh, I-10 westbound at Giver Street. So again, check those vehicles before you get out on the roadways this morning because we've been seeing a few more of those stalls now that more people are getting their days started with us. But the issues have been pretty quiet so far. We haven't seen any big crashes right now. Did it a little bit earlier this morning, but those quickly resolved. The inbound times are looking pretty good. If you're going to be traveling to San Antonio from any of these neighboring communities this morning, uh, right now coming in from Seguin, pretty green with I-10. 30 minutes right now, 23 minutes coming in from Lavernia and 29 minutes uh, coming in from Floridasville. So if you're going to be traveling out the door in the next few minutes, just remember, check those vehicles and we'll be watching the roads closely. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. A home already undergoing renovations is now in need of major repairs. Fire tore through that home overnight, sending people running for cover. The home is on the north side in the 300 block of West Hollywood Avenue. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, was anyone hurt? No, firefighters say that all of the people made it out safely. Now, this, it's a family of five who is displaced because of this fire. When firefighters got here before 1230 this morning, everyone had already made it out safely. Flames also were coming out of the door and windows of the home. They eventually got the fire knocked down, but not before it caused more than $100,000 in damage. Firefighters mentioned that this home, which here is here in the Monte Vista Historic District, was undergoing renovations at that time. Now, it looks like some of those construction materials are still out here. And you can also see the soot from the damage that was done to this home. We don't know yet exactly how the fire started. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Also new this morning, San Antonio police left with questions following a deadly shooting. It happened in the 2000 block of East South Cross on the southeast side near I-37. And that's where SAPD says a man in his mid-50s was shot in the face, but somehow managed to drive to a Dollar General store while on the phone with his wife. Police say the man was pronounced dead at the scene once officers got there. Right now, investigators don't know what led up to the shooting. And turning now to the coronavirus and the growing number of overwhelmed nurses. We spoke with a medical assistant who just applied to nursing school. She says pop-up clinics are brutal. She says the days are long with little to no breaks and nurses have to be fully decked out in PPE gear while outside in the heat. You start to feel faint 
when you start to feel sick. I've seen some of the older nurses actually sit down and almost pass out because they're so tired. And for that reason, a lot of them already left and resigned. A 2019 Texas Center for Nursing Workforce study showed a projected shortage of 57,000 nurses by the year 2032. But according to an associate dean at UT Health San Antonio's nursing school, their applications have doubled since last year. Students typically start caring for patients about a month into the program. Their current graduation rate is at about 92%. You may have heard a majority of the coronavirus cases presently are among the unvaccinated in hopes of keeping people out of the hospital. An infusion center is opening up at the Freeman Coliseum Expo Hall later today. It is meant to help administer COVID-19 antibodies that can help a COVID patient fight the virus before symptoms worsen. The last time this facility was set up, 3,000 patients were treated. The facility has the capacity to treat about 150 patients per day. Each patient would need a doctor's order before receiving the antibody treatment free of charge. Remember, people can develop antibodies before catching the virus by getting the vaccine. Doctors say getting the vaccine can help keep you out of the hospital with COVID-19. We have this week's pop-up vaccine clinics listed online on KSAT.com. The San Antonio Zoo also making themselves available to host some of those clinics. We have all the information again on our website. San Antonio ISD students getting back to school. Jenners are getting them out of the way. And this district says most parents want students and staffs to wear masks. District officials say 99% of parents support a recommendation for everyone on campus to wear face coverings indoors. The rest opted for their children not to wear a mask. The district held a COVID-19 testing event last week and plans on hosting more vaccination events at larger high schools in the very near future. Today in Washington, senators are expected to hold their final vote on that $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. CNN's Brett Conway has a look at what that bill could mean for the average American and what else needs to get done to make it happen. Closing in on a $1.2 trillion infrastructure deal. This will do a whole lot of good for America and the Senate can be proud it has passed this. And passing it is the plan. The Senate is set to hold its final vote on the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act today. Politically, it's a bipartisan victory. For the country, it's also about competing globally. We're falling behind where we once were in the world. And our rivals, slowly but surely, are pulling close behind us. For each state, it could add up to billions in improvements. The White House's website breaks it down state by state. There's a fact sheet for all 50 states and Puerto Rico with how much money each could get for everything from road and bridge work to public transportation, electric vehicle chargers and broadband. For thousands of people, this infrastructure plan could mean work. It's going to create at least 650,000 new high-skilled, high-paying jobs. And it could mean millions of jobs over the course of the next several years. But it carries a big price tag, and enactment depends on what happens over the next several weeks and months. Right now, the Senate is working on the $3.5 trillion budget resolution. Then the resolution and the infrastructure bill will both head to the House, which means more negotiations. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And job openings in the U.S. hit a record high in June. According to the Labor Department, 10.1 million jobs were recorded. Hiring also rose to 6.7 million in June. However, there are new concerns that the resurgence in COVID-19 cases could mean that some will put off returning to the workforce. Some Amazon sellers are reportedly tracking down customers to delete bad reviews. Some people have been offered refunds worth more than the price of a product to remove a negative review. Amazon says it's a policy violation and it does not share customer emails with third party sellers. And time now is 640 and about 78 degrees right now. So head on GMSA some tips for getting rid of bugs and rodents in your home. And welcome back. It's about 643. So do you have a pest problem? Well, warmer weather, weather is usually to blame for bugs and rodents making their way inside your home. In this morning's Ask Angie segment, RJ Marquez discusses what to do if you find yourself with too many pests or rodents in your home and you want to clear them out. Pests and rodents are unwelcome visitors to our homes, but they're also stubborn and can be hard to get rid of. 
Bailey Carson, head of everyday services at Angie and a home care expert, is here to offer tips on how to prevent and rid your home of pests and rodents, from tiny bugs to bigger critters. The more the merrier, right? Usually, but not when it comes to pests and rodents. There are many ways to get rid of pests and rodents, but the best thing to do is prevent them in the first place. So consider planting some pest repelling plants, things like sage, basil, and rosemary. They're great to use in the kitchen, and they're all pet friendly as well. If your garage seems to be a target for any rodents, check the garage door for any gaps in the liner or between the door and the walls. Those can be easy entrances for smaller critters. Seal them, or if need be, consider a garage door replacement. Also, be sure to take the trash out regularly and clean the bins every so often to keep odors down and critters out. If you leave doors and windows open without screens to let in some fresh air, expect that you will have some pests inside. The same can apply to pet doors. A good trick there is to not leave food too close to the pet door. If you continue to have problems even after moving the food, consider installing a sensor near the pet door, which will allow it to only open for your pet. If you're dealing with roaches, your options range from a $10 bug bomb to a $15,000 severe fumigation job with tenting of a large home. If you're dealing with larger pests like rats, you'll want to take a few steps. First, seal off any cracks or crevices where they could be getting in. Then declutter your spaces so there's less for them to get into. And also seal up any potential food sources. And then finally, a trick to use outside, a spray around your foundation and on your roof, is a combination of cayenne pepper, clove oil, black pepper oil, and olive oil. This combination can deter those critters. If rats have already made their way into your home, consider non-lethal traps to catch them. With a yummy snack like peanut butter or cheese, these traps lure the rats inside before trapping them inside. And for full infestations, it's best to call in a pro. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. We call them unwelcome visitors or unwanted guests. 646, yeah. about 78 degrees. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos and no rats on the roadways. Uh, yeah, well, we'll have to ask. Uh, we'll have to take a close look right now. I'll tell you that. My mom did have a lizard problem, though, uh, when we were younger. Oh. Uh, taking a look at TransGuide right now, things are picking up here at I-10 at the Y. Pretty nice shot, I'd say. Uh, but, you know, spotting a few stalls here off I-10 westbound at Geavers. Still reported out there. Uh, seeing uh, just a few issues out there this morning. Uh, crashes were uh, definitely not on our radar this morning, thankfully, but just some stalls. So just again, make sure you check those vehicles before getting out on the roadway. Uh, but let's go ahead and just give you one more reminder. If you see a bus out there, uh, just make sure when they have those stopping flashlights out there, uh, if you're traveling down a road that has two lanes, you got to stop in both directions. And that same rule does apply if it's a multi laned uh, road that you're traveling on. But if you're traveling down an area that has a divided highway, you just have to slow down if you're traveling in that opposite direction. But of course, use some caution when you see those buses out there. As we continue to mention, we want to make sure our kiddos get to school on time and safely. And one last look at Transguide I-10 at the Y looking pretty good right now. But I do have to say good morning to my five year old nephew, Drew. He's up watching this show early right now. My sister just told me that he's she's getting him ready to get uh, ready for school. Uh, Gavin training 620. She says she's got him up every morning. Uh, but he starts school tomorrow. So good morning, Drew. Hopefully we'll see a picture of him tomorrow. When yes, I drew. have a great day at school, Drew. Yeah. And yes, yeah, send in your picture. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of school, we want to highlight your students as they head back to the classroom. You can submit a picture with a description of your student at kset.com slash pins. And here's a picture of my little girl, Rooney. She started That's second grade. Rooney. That was you in second grade. <laughs> no, actually, I, no, no. We look a little different. We a little different, Griff. She looks a lot more like my husband. But yeah, started second grade yesterday. Uh, she was uh, full of energy still after school when I picked her up, so you, that's a great sign. You said she was still smiling at the end of the day, yeah, which is always a good was. sign. It was a very good sign. Yeah, oh. She was very happy. Well, welcome back to everybody, and welcome back to Mike Ostrich. Hey. He was out yes, last week, and uh, I like this one uh, because it's got well, the old, yeah. uh, old glory in it. Yeah, I mean, beautiful sunset and nothing like seeing the stars and stripes there, and what a Beautiful picture. Yeah, that was uh, just a couple of days ago. Great way to start off the weekend. Great way to start off the week as well. And uh, well, 
not the prettiest picture out there. A lot of clouds hanging around and it is humid heat index right now. It feels like uh, the mid 80s in some areas all around the metropolitan area, low to mid 80s, 86 stints in Castroville and then even mid and some upper 70s out in portions of the uh, hill country. And we've got our low morning clouds hanging around. Obviously, they'll be breaking up and we'll see more sunshine later on today. And then also a little bit of moisture aloft in the atmosphere. The uh, kind of this medium shade of gray means some of those high clouds or maybe a milky shade of the sky later on. Not a lot of clouds, though, just not those vivid completely blue skies out there later on today. Here's a computer model and uh, this is indicating um, we'll have clouds this morning, more sunshine this afternoon and the next couple of days, even including the this afternoon, a sea breeze shower or two is possible. Not very likely. This model has things pushing in a little bit further to the uh, west. I kind of doubt that. Same situation though, going into uh, tomorrow. Excuse me, going into Thursday as well. A couple of those sea breeze showers or uh, a thunderstorm down there along the coast. But for the rest of us, just going to be pretty much hot and humid. Although we do have a chance of rain then coming in here by later on, especially later on in the weekend. 91 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies high temperature up to 96 pretty much a repeat of yesterday heat index well up into the hundreds kind of breezy today and uh yeah boy find as much shade as possible today same thing tomorrow same thing on thursday we'll have clouds in the morning sunshine in the afternoon these numbers are just about at the normal average high temperature which is 97 degrees and then there is a disturbance which is going to be lying across the area mainly up to the north and that's going to help out a couple of extra clouds knock a degree or two off temperatures going in toward the weekend and then we have a chance for a shower or two around here late Friday or Saturday a slightly better chance for a shower or thunderstorm Sunday and Monday don't get really excited about this but one or two of them out there later on in the weekend that's weird Mike because we were just getting excited and then you told us not to so <laughs> we always get excited so when we see it even a chance of rain we'll we'll chill okay. a, a yes. little okay just I mean we're bit. waiting on the chill I mean it's still four or five days off mm -hmm. so we've got to temper things a little bit yeah we have expectations here Mike. yes we do <laughs> thank you sir night I'm sorry, 651, 78 degrees. And here's a look at what's coming up tomorrow on GMSA. It's a mural that's worth more than a second look. It's 3D. I'm Katrina Weber. That story tomorrow on GMSA. And outside with live cam, we're going to wrap up this morning's uh, early newscast after the break. Good morning, everyone. We're keeping a watchful eye on the roads right now. Got a few things working right now. We're going to go ahead and see if we can pull this shot up at TransGuide and show you. Right now, though, things are looking pretty smooth. We do have this crash that was reported here off Loop 410 eastbound right at Ingram. We're already starting to see some of the traffic slow down there. We're moving right now. That is at 47 miles per hour, so use some caution driving through that area. We're going to be keeping a close eye on that and how that could impact that morning drive. Uh, let's go ahead and jump over here. Still the stall out there of I-10 westbound at Giver Street, so check those vehicles before getting on the roadways this morning, but right now the issues are still limited though. We're seeing a lane closure right there on 410, uh, but the inbound times if you're traveling into the downtown San Antonio area are still looking pretty good right now. We're going to be watching things closely and Mike's got your forecast. It is very warm out there right now. We've got some uh, clouds hanging around 79 degrees. However, when you factor in the humidity, eh, you can add about four or five to that. 86 stints and 86 in Castroville is what it actually feels like. And throughout the rest of today, 91 at noon, 96 high temperature, somewhat of a breeze out there. Hopefully it kind of takes the edge off of those uh, temperatures, but it's going to feel like with the humidity well up into the low hundreds. Same thing tomorrow, Thursday. Friday, a couple of more clouds and going into the weekend, so that'll shave a few degrees off temperatures and one or two showers are possible over the weekend. Oh, watch out for it. Stay cool out there, definitely. Be safe, everybody. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you back here at 9.